How's it going ladies and gentlemen? Recently I've released a plethora of videos about external CSGO hack features, but um, let's be real, externals are kind of shit. So today I thought we'd hold hands, look left and right, and uh, cross the street over into internal land. But before we get into that, the um, biggest mistake I see people making is uh, not subscribing to this YouTube channel. So uh, you should do that. And I also have a Discord server, so if you need any help, join us over there. Anyway, let's talk about what exactly internal cheats are. When you run a program, more often than not, the program will load a series of modules in the form of .dll files. DLLs are dynamic linked libraries, or in other words, a program that you can't just double click to run, but rather needs to be loaded by an executable program at runtime. Now, luckily, us dirty hackers can use this to advantage with a little trick called DLL injection. DLL injection is when you force a program to load your own library through the use of an injector. More on that later. When the library is loaded, it operates within the program's virtual memory space, unlike external cheats. This brings us a series of benefits. We no longer have to modify memory externally through the Windows API with read and write process memory. Rather, we can simply directly access the memory because our library exists within the program, remember? This not only greatly increases performance, but it lets us do things that simply aren't possible possible externally, like hooking functions for example. Hopefully that all makes sense so that you aren't going into this completely blind, but without further ado, let's get into the code. Alright, we're going to go ahead and start where all good things start with a brand new Visual Studio project. I'm using Visual Studio 2022 for those who are curious, and we're going to go ahead and create a new project. I'm going to use an empty project, and I just prefer it that way because all of these um, templates include a bunch of boilerplate bullshit that I don't care about. So just create an empty project, and I'm going to go ahead and call it sexy internal because this is going to be very sexy and I'm going to save it to my desktop. Now, once Visual Studio has opened up, very important, we're going to switch from debug to release. And even more importantly, we're going to switch from 64-bit uh, to 32-bit. This is because CSGO is a 32-bit game, which means that you have to make a 32-bit DLL for it to even get injected because the DLL has to match the architecture of the game. Now, we're going to need to change a couple properties. So go ahead and right-click on your project and go to properties. In general, we're going to go ahead and change configuration type to dynamic library so that we can build ourselves a nice DLL. And then we're going to go to C++ language standard and we're going to change this to C++ 20. Go ahead and apply. Next, we're going to come over here to advanced and we're going to change the character set from use Unicode character set to use multi byte character set. Go ahead and apply. And finally, very important, we're going to come to linker and then system and we need to change the subsystem from console to Windows. This is because we are making a Windows application, we're making a DLL file, it uses the Windows subsystem, this is going to allow us to make our DLL entry point. So go ahead and click apply and OK. Now with all of that out the way, we can go ahead and make our main.cpp file. So I'm going to add a new item to source files, we're going to add a source file and I'm going to call it main. Now once again, because a DLL is a Windows thing, we're going to need to include the Windows uh, SDK for this. And uh, we're going to do that by, first of all, defining Win32 Lean and Mean. We define Win32 Lean and Mean uh, so that we don't include the entire Windows SDK, only the essential things. Um, and this is just to save compile time and binary size and things like that. But after that's defined, we can go ahead and include uh, Windows.h just like that. Next, we're going to go ahead and include uh, the two header files that we're going to use throughout this uh, program. And the first one is going to be C standard int. This is going to give us access to the STD UN pointer. And finally, we're going to include thread so that we can sleep our program. Now, all of that brings us to the entry point. Now, a DLL's entry point is slightly different to any entry point you've probably seen before, and it looks something like this. It is a function called DLL main uh, that is of type int, and it has a switch inside of it on the FDW reason. Now, these reasons are called when the, uh, when the DLL does things like is attached or is detached and things like that. And what we're interested in is the DLL process attach, which is number one. Anyway, let's go ahead and make our um, entry point. We can do that like so. It's going to be an int and very important it uses the standard call calling convention which is the standard windows convention and another very important thing is that it has to be called dll main spelled correctly now dll main takes uh, three parameters and the first one is going to be an h module and we're going to go ahead and call that instance this is going to be the instance of our DLL. Next, it takes a D word, which is going to be our reason. So we're going to use this to check uh, the reason of uh, attachment or detachment or whatever's going on. And finally, there is the void pointer reserved, which is basically always null. It's not used. It's reserved. 
Now coming back to MSDN, we can see that uh, the other main always returns true, which is uh, one. If we type out true over here and we look at the value, it's one. So we're just gonna go ahead and return one. Now for the reasons, the only thing we are actually interested in is uh, the DLL process attach, which is just number one. So we're gonna go ahead and make an if statement here. And we're gonna say, uh, if reason is equal to one, then uh, we're gonna go ahead and do our stuff. Remember this here is DLL process attach. Now the first thing we're going to do in here is we're going to call a function called disable thread library calls. Coming back over here to MSDN, uh, we can see that the disable thread library calls function disables the DLL thread attach and DLL thread detach notifications for a dynamic linked library. This can reduce the size of the working set for some applications. So remember, these are these two reasons over here thread attach and thread detach. Um, so we're basically just gonna disable these because we aren't interested in them at all. So go ahead and call disable thread library calls and we're gonna pass in our instance. Now the next thing we're gonna need to do is create our hack thread. And in order to do that, we actually need to make our hack function. So let's do that quickly. We're just gonna make it uh, empty. We're gonna create a void function and I'm gonna call it bunny hop. Uh, it's void because we don't want any return type. And it's gonna take one parameter, which is going to be our H module. We're also gonna call it instance over here. And uh, we don't want this to throw any exceptions. So no except, and go ahead and create that body. Now, obviously we're gonna come back and fill this in with our actual bunny hop later. For now, we still need to create our thread. And we can do that like so. We're gonna create a const auto and we're gonna call it thread. So a local variable called thread, and we're gonna call create thread, which is a Windows API function. As we can see, the first parameter here is LP security attributes. Um, LP stands for long pointers, so we're gonna make that a null pointer. Next, we have size undersc underscore T, so we're gonna make that zero. Uh, now, this here is very important. We're gonna need to reinterpret cast over here. Reinterpret cast. LP thread start routine, and we're going to use our bunny hop function over here. Now, the reason we do this is because if we come over here and we look at the definition of LP thread start routine, it's a type def of P thread start routine, and P thread start routine is this um, function definition over here, which is a function that uh, returns a D word, it is a standard call, and uh, it takes an LP void parameter. Now, as we can see, our hack function does not do that. It does not return a D word, it does not take an LP void, and uh, um, it's not by the underscore underscore uh, standard call calling convention. What we need to do is we actually need to cast our function to a supported type, which is the LP thread start routine. Now, the next parameter for um, create thread is actually the uh, the argument that we're passing to the function. So if we look here, our bunny hop function takes an instance. It actually takes this instance. So we need to go ahead and pass that to our function. So we can do that like so. Finally, the next uh, argument is a D word. So we're just gonna make that zero and last but but not least, we have an LPD word, which we're gonna make a null pointer, because remember, LP is long pointer, or pointer, whatever, it doesn't matter. This needs to be an, uh, a null pointer. So go ahead and uh, end that function off. And finally, the absolute last thing we need to do in our DLL main function is we need to actually uh, close the handle created by this thread. So we can do that like so. We're gonna make sure that thread uh, actually is valid, and then we're going to close handle on this thread. And that is our entry point completed. It's gonna go ahead and create a thread, it's gonna run our bup function, and it's gonna pass an instance. The reason we want instance is so that we can actually uninject our DLL over here. Now, before we actually get to coding our hack, we're gonna need some offsets as per usual. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a namespace over here, and we're gonna call this offset. Now over here, I have haze dumper and I've dumped the latest CSGO offsets. If you don't know how to do this, go ahead and watch the video in the top right. It'll also be in the description. It's uh, how to use haze dumper. And I show you how to uh, dump your own offsets, the most up-to-date ones with haze dumper. So I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, the offsets over here. So these here are the offsets that you're gonna need. Local player, force jump, health, and flags. Remember, every time CSGO updates, there's a very good chance that uh, these offsets have changed. So if your code isn't working, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your offsets are up to date. To update offsets, all you do is get the latest value and uh, you replace this number with it. Pretty simple. All right, now that we have our offsets, we can go ahead and begin with the actual cheat. Now, this is where one of the first differences between uh, internal and external comes in. We no longer need to uh, use a memory class, you might have noticed. Uh, we can actually just directly get the um, base address of a module and we can do that like so. So we're gonna make a const auto client and we're gonna reinterpret cast this to a std uint pointer. And um, to get the address of a module, all you need to do is call get 
module handle and pass in the name of the module. So there's no more looping through modules. There's no more uh, TL32 snapshot bullshit. You can literally get the address of client just by calling get module handle. Next, we're gonna go ahead and create our hack loop. This as per usual is gonna be a while loop. Uh, but what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna say while exclamation mark get async key state, and we're gonna make it VK underscore end. So this means that while you are not pushing end, uh, run the code in this loop. So when you click end, it's gonna break out of this loop. And when we break out, what we wanna do is we wanna actually uninject our DLL. And we can do that like so. We call free library and exit thread. We pass in the instance, remember, that our function takes. And uh, we give an exit code, which you're gonna make zero. And this is actually going to free the library and exit the thread. This is gonna uninject our DLL so that you can re-inject it when you make changes and you can test out your hacks. Now, of course, change this key to whatever you want. It's a panic key, it's whatever, it'll uninject your DLL. I just use end, uh, just, I don't know, it's like tradition. Now in this while loop, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to sleep it because we don't need it running a billion times per second. And we can do that like so. STD this thread sleep for, STD chrono, and milliseconds, oh, there's a microseconds, milliseconds, uh, and we're gonna sleep it for one millisecond. Now that's just going to uh, save on some CPU usage over here. Um, but now the first thing we're going to do uh, hack-wise is we're going to make sure that uh, spacebar is being pressed because obviously we're going to want to b-hop when we're pressing down spacebar. So we're going to say if exclamation get async key state um, and we're going to use vk underscore space. So if we aren't pressing down spacebar, go ahead and continue. What this is going to do is uh, if you are not pressing down spacebar, it's not going to run any code under this. It's just going to jump straight back to the beginning of the loop, sleep, and it's going to sit here until you press spacebar. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to get our local player. And uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, um, we no longer need to use read and write process memory. Instead, we can just uh, cast to a pointer and then dereference it. So to get our local player, we can do that like so. Const auto local player is going to be equal to, now we put the star here because we're dereferencing it. So reinterpret cast, std un pointer uh, underscore t, pointer, very important there. So as we can see, we are dereferencing this pointer that we create over here. And what we are casting is client plus our DW local player offset. If you've watched my previous videos, you might recognize this. It's all the same. The only difference is that instead of using a uh, memory dot read, we can uh, basically just cast it to a pointer over here. We're casting it to a UN pointer. And then we are um, dereferencing the pointer to actually get the address of our local player. Now we need to make sure that our local player is valid. So if exclamation mark local player. So if local player isn't valid, go ahead and continue like so. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that our local player is alive and we can do that like so. Const auto health is going to be equal to, once again, star reinterpret cast uh, and health is a uh, in 32. So we're gonna read an in 32 pointer and the address we're gonna read is our local player because health is a member variable or a member offset uh, plus offset m underscore i health. And now we can check is alive, so is alive, and if exclamation mark health, go ahead and continue. So if our local player is not alive, we are going to once again, not run any code under it. We're gonna jump back to the beginning. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get our flags so that we can check if we are on the ground and whether or not we want to be hop. So we can do that like so. Once again, const auto flags is equal to star reinterpret cast. I believe it's called an asterisk, so asterisk anyway. Uh, we're gonna use an int 32 once again because flags is a uh, int 32. And remember, it's a pointer. It's an int 32 pointer that is being dereferenced. The address we're gonna read is local player plus our offset m underscore flags, just like so. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and check if we are on ground and we can do that like so. So what we're gonna do is we're going to say flags, then we're gonna use the and uh, symbol, and we're going to make a nice little uh, bit mask thingy over here. And we're gonna add the question mark because we're making a shorthand if statement over here. So basically, if we are on ground, we're going to run this line of code, which is gonna be, once again, asterisk, reinterpret cast, and we're gonna be reading a uint pointer, uint pointer underscore t, pointer, very important. And the address you're gonna be reading is client plus um, our offset dw force jump. And we're gonna set this to six. This is going to cause us to force jump, of course. So force jump, 
And if we aren't on the ground, we want to reset it back to four to allow us to uh, jump normally and use spacebar. So we're going to reinterpret cast once again, std un pointer uh, underscore t pointer. And we're going to use client plus offset dw force jump. And we're going to set it to four to once again reset it. Don't forget your semicolon and reset. And uh, that just about sums up our cheat. It should be all done. So what we need to do now is we're going to go ahead and build the solution. If we take a look here on my desktop in my sexy internal folder, if we go into release, you will see that we have a, uh, where is it? Sexy internal dot DLL. Very, very cool. Of course, this is all you need. So I'm going to go ahead and open up CSGO and uh, I'm going to show you guys how to get that injected. Now, a very important thing over here, before you launch CSGO, you need to be aware that um, CSGO has blocked all load library injection. So if you want to release the sheet or you want to use it uh, properly, like on a proper server, you're going to need to manual map. But because in this uh, video, we're just going to be testing, I'm going to go ahead and go to the CSGO properties over here, and I'm going to add the flag insecure. What this does is it disables VAC completely. So you won't be allowed to join any official servers, um, but it'll let you inject your DLLs with load library, which is what we're going to do today. So I'm going to go ahead and launch CSGO. All right, so I'm in CSGO, and as you can see, we have this message box. It says Valve Anti-Cheat. You have launched the game in insecure mode. So uh, yeah, that's just make sure that it says this when you are testing your hacks. So we're gonna go ahead and click OK, and I'm gonna join a match quickly. So I'll catch you guys then. Now, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna be using uh, Xenos. Xenos, I don't know how to say it anyway. Um, it's an open source injector. It's very detected, but remember, we're, we're just testing uh, it's a load library injector. It also has a whole bunch of other features. But um, before you use it, uh, you're going to need to disable your antivirus. So we can do that like so. I'm going to go ahead and type in Defender. Open up Windows Security. Virus and Threat Protection. Over here, Manage Settings. And we're going to turn off Real-Time Protection. I'll have a download link to Xenos uh, in the description below. And if you don't trust it, just remember that uh, it's actually an open source program. So if you don't trust, you can go ahead and look through the source code. You can compile it yourself. But anyway, once your antivirus has been disabled, you can go ahead and open the archive. In here, you will find a Xenos and a Xenos 64. We're going to use the 32-bit uh, Xenos. And uh, I'm going to drop that into my um, output directory over here. And we go ahead and run this. Once it runs, you'll see something like this. We're going to go ahead and attach to csgo.exe. So go ahead and find that over here. And we're going to add a DLL file. Go ahead and find your release folder. And we're going to use sexy internal .dll. Click open. And uh, all you need to do now is click inject. Once you click inject, your DLL will be injected. And I'm in game. If I go ahead and hold down spacebar, as we can see, I be hop around. It works perfectly. And if we go ahead and click end, so I click end a couple times, I no longer be hop when I hold down spacebar. So what you can do is you can come back and you can go ahead and re-inject, jumping back in game, and I be hop again. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you learned something. Remember, if you uh, want to use this on official servers, you can't use Dash Insecure and you need to use a manual map injector. If you don't know where to find one, go onto Unknown Cheats or just Google. You'll find plenty. There's tons around. Um, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to drop a like and subscribe, join my Discord server, and I'll check you guys in the next one. Merry Christmas, cheers, and goodbye.